I grew up knowing I was indigenous. Not knowing anything about my tribe, where I came from, or who my ancestors were, I entered each school I enrolled in, denying having any inheritance or relevance to the culture. Looking back, I feel ashamed. I was brought up in the suburb of Springfield, the Yagara, Yugara, and Yugarapur people's land. My nana would come over to us, or we would visit her every few years. Her name is Patricia, and she lives in Shark Bay in Western Australia. She is Aboriginal. I have faint memories of us creating wax paintings and dot paintings together in my living room. She does this for a living, and sells them each weekend at the local markets. She wasn't afraid to tell her story, but I was. At my first school around year one, I got the approval for my nana to come in and teach my class about painting. I was so proud, my very own role model. After moving to my second school, their indigenous culture was huge. Dance troupe, leadership positions, art classes, all dedicated to the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students. I was sometimes teased for my lack of blackness after claiming I was Aboriginal. I soon, and very soon, went quiet about it. The type of people that were in these groups were the physical embodiment of a typical Indigenous person. Black skin, black hair. I was beyond nervous to join. I'm white. My hair is light. There was no way I was going to join those groups and actually fit in. So I didn't. I began to forget some of the times I had spent with her having only few photos and even fewer videos to look back on. Looking back at those times, I like to think of them as the sorry days. Sorry to my mother's family, in particular my nana. Sorry for leaving behind my culture and my experiences. As the typical tween does, they get lost amongst the idea of fitting in. That's exactly what I did. I hid my heritage. I avoided talking about my mother's side of the family, I did not want my friends from my new school knowing that I partly came from a family who was black. Because according to society, black is bad, black is shameful, black is ugly. I became quiet once again. Grandparents day would roll around in junior school. Nada could almost never make it to those types of things. I wasn't upset. My father's mother, Nonna Eliana, would come. His side of the family is Spanish. They come from Argentina and Italy. Of course, I loved seeing Ileana just as much as Nana, yet I somehow always wished that Nana would come to my school again and teach us how to paint, just like I was a child again. After moving back again to my third and final school, I believe I've truly been able to express myself and what Australia's history means to me. Last year, I was a part of the Deadly Crew at my school, which brings all of the Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander students together to create excursions, share our stories, and be a part of important events within the community. And this year, I'm proud to say that I'm one of the two leaders of this group. Like I mentioned, there are still moments when I lose confidence in myself when the topic arises. For an example, late at night the other day, I was in the hospital with a severely sore stomach. The woman behind the desk was particularly judgmental of my state. She went through a series of questions, she went through these very slowly. She then asked me, Are you of any Aboriginal or Torres Strait Islander descent? Although the way she spoke, it sounded more like a statement. She hurried on to the next question after taking a short glance at me. Am I too white? Do I not have dark enough hair? Is my accent different? I think about that time a lot, and how nice it would have felt to speak up about it. How nice it would have felt to prove her wrong. The whole idea of, if you aren't black, then you aren't indigenous, has really made me think about who I am. And now, I'm 17. Although I have definitely grown out of my fitting in phase, I can't say that I've fully understood my culture and what it means to be an indigenous young girl. I shouldn't have to worry about the amount of melanin in my skin. So why should anyone else? I'm Caitlin Kasa, a part of the Yamaji tribe in the sub-tribe of Nagaja 
and I am proud to be a white Aboriginal.